Welcome back to Network Africa. Following the death of Italian graduate students, of an Italian graduate students, Egypt now faces tough questions about human rights and protection of foreigners in particular. Giulio Rgeni, who was in Egypt to conduct research on trade unions and labor rights, disappeared on the 25th of January. A week later, his body was found dumped by a roadside, showing what a senior Egyptian prosecutor called glaring signs of torture. There was outrage not only on the internet, but in Italy, as allegations spread about possible police involvement in the student's demise. Egypt has denied that the victim was arrested shortly before his death and confirmed that an investigation into Julio Regeni's killing is ongoing with full Italian collaboration. We go live to Cairo, where the voice of America's Edward Iranian is standing by. Edward, thank you for joining us on Network Africa. My pleasure, Cynthia. Now, Egypt has a pretty bad record when it comes to security, the security of foreigners. Last year, eight Mexicans were killed by mistake, and now this Italian student. What are authorities doing or saying to reassure foreigners of their safety? I would, I would say that security for foreigners is generally much better than security for everyone else. Um, I have three police inspectors who are constantly asking me if everything's okay. And, uh, you know, I think they go to unusual lengths most of the time to protect foreigners. So uh, the assumption that the government was behind this, um, while I couldn't say categorically one way or the other that it's false, um, I... I would say there's really no way to prove it at this point. Um, and my suspicions would not necessarily go to the government. Um, and I think what you have to understand is the backdrop of the war that's going on, the struggle between the Muslim Brotherhood and mm -hmm. the government. Uh, both sides are fighting, waging a fairly bitter struggle. I, I don't want to say war because there isn't a lot of blood in the streets uh, as of yet. Uh, but at the same time, uh, everyone is trying to discredit uh, the other. Um, yeah. So I, I wouldn't go necessarily by the theory that the government did this. Now, oh, um, Edward, how does this type of news affect Egypt's tourism industry? Uh, clearly, it, effect, it affects it. Um, every attack um, on foreigners, on foreign airplanes, on uh, foreign tourist spots like uh, Hergada and Sharm el Sheikh. Uh, undoubtedly uh, hurt the tourism industry. That's part of the strategy. That's the war, that's the mm -hmm. struggle that's being waged right now. People are trying to pull down the government and the Muslim Brotherhood would like to come back to power. Um, so um, it, it's part of a strategy. I, I think uh, there's no question that people are deliberately trying to attack the government sources of revenues, thinking that strategically, economically, somewhere down the road, it's going to collapse. Um, I don't think that's going to work, but it's certainly making life fairly miserable and unpleasant for us journalists as well. Well, I was going to ask how safe you feel as a foreign journalist, but based on what you said at the start of the interview, I take it that you feel relatively safe since three policemen check up on you every now and then. Edward, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. We appreciate your time. My pleasure, Cynthia. Now, as South Sudan tries to rebuild itself, China is chipping in to help in the renovation of a 121-kilometer road along various routes of Turale area. This is part of work being done by the United Nations Mission in South Sudan during the dry season aimed at boosting main supply routes in specific regions. Since the conflict began three years ago in South Sudan, roads have been destroyed and abandoned. In mid-December 2015, UN troops have deployed their heavy machinery for reconstruction, but have only managed to fix two-thirds of the roads. However, they hope to finish before the rains start. The road is expected to help in the transportation of goods. The road linking Kwajak Benchu and Abye is one of the main supply routes for South Sudan, providing logistic support to Warab and Unity areas in the northern parts of the country and beyond to Abye area. For the engineers, working in these remote areas is never easy. A combination of bad roads, hard ground and safety issues always hampered their progress. 
Recently, the road is in bad condition and affected with potholes, undulating surface, uh, lack of drainage, improper coverage. It requires immediately upgrade, repair, and maintenance. They encounter numerous challenges on a daily basis, mostly mechanical, resulting in them having to wait on spare parts. As a result, they run behind shadow. Oftentimes, they give a hand to foot convoy truck drivers who get stuck on the bad roads and are in need of repairs for their own vehicles. Working alongside the Chinese engineering team are Kenyan Force Protection Troops who are tasked to ensure the security of the engineering team and their equipment. Every day we come out with them to the road sites when, as they continue trying to do the road repairs, we are able to provide them with the all-round protection so that they can be able to smoothly carry out their, their job. Improving transport infrastructure in South Sudan is a critical factor to improving a stable and viable state. Well, last week we asked you what, if you thought Nigeria was ready for the Internet of Things, and our top feedback is coming from Q Things in the Beat. He says Nigeria has to solve the problem of light first, or the IOT, that's short for Internet of Things, will just be a great painting on the wall. Thank you so much for your feedback, and please keep them coming. On that note, here's our question of the day. What are your thoughts about Boko Haram being trained in Somalia? Feel free to send us your feedback either via email or Twitter. The address and handles are right there on your screen. Thank you so much for watching Network Africa on Channels Television. I'm Cynthia Arendt.